Hi, I'm Sunny Kane, and welcome to the C3 Church Global Podcast. Today, I'm going to be doing a short devotional about confidence in your call. I want you to have confidence in the calling that God has placed upon your life. But before I do that, let me tell you just a little bit about myself. I'm married to Jeff Kane. We've been married for a little bit over 25 years. We've got two boys that are both away at university, so we are trying to figure out this whole empty nesters thing. It's like we're newlyweds all over again and we're loving it. Uh, We have the role of being the senior pastors of C3 Church Atlanta. It is our pride and joy. Uh, And we also are the regional directors for C3 North America minus Canada and also C3 South America. And it is such a privilege and honor to stand in those roles. It's a privilege for me to stand in the role of a wife, as a mother, as an overseer, as a pastor. Gosh, and it's such a privilege to be sitting right here with you doing this podcast. I hope so much that you're going to receive something today, that you're going to learn a little something today. So why don't we jump right into things? I want you to know this. You are a kingdom builder. That's what you are. You are a kingdom builder. And the most important thing that God wants to do is establish his kingdom right here on earth. And the crazy thing is he's chosen you. He's chosen you and he's chosen me. He's chosen us to make that happen right here, to encourage his people, to strengthen his people, to build up his people, to spread his gospel. He's chosen you. Do you realize how much value is placed upon your life? He's chosen you. And it's so important that we understand that we've been called. We've been called to do this job by the most high king. It's not like your boss asked you to do this. The boss of all bosses, your creator has called you to help him carry out the most important task that he has. He believes in you that much. And it's really important that we start believing in ourselves that much. I find that as I talk to people and I'm meeting people and just the older that I get that people really struggle with confidence because they don't know where to place their confidence. They don't know if they should place their confidence in themselves. They don't know if they should place their confidence somewhat in Christ and somewhat in themselves. Sometimes they don't have any confidence at all. And I think it's important that we get a grasp of this, that we understand where we are and what we're doing and who we are, because if we will, we will carry out that mission. We will be exactly who God chose for us to be. We want to be confident in our call, not confident in ourselves, but confident in who Christ is in us. Galatians 2.20, Paul tells us, I've been crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live, but it's Christ that lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I've been crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. You know, when I'm searching for confidence, what I have to really think about is it's not my ability. It's really God's ability. It's really Christ in me. Christ isn't going to ask me to do anything that he hasn't given me the skills and the gifts and the abilities to do. So the second that I stop thinking, how am I going to do this? And I start thinking, wait a minute, if I'm called, if I'm anointed, if he's asked me to do this particular job, then he's definitely put on the inside of me how to do it. His Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me and his Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. So instead of us thinking, how are we going to do this? How am I going to do this? It's really what a miracle what Christ is going to do in me as he sends me out to accomplish the goal that he has for me to accomplish. Now, for you, that might be leading a small group. That might be leading a department in your church. It could be leading your church. Maybe, maybe you're a senior pastor listening to this. It could be preaching that sermon next week that you're preaching about something you don't absolutely love and feel great about. It could be you going to your job and leading the people around you, just being a great friend. Maybe that's what your call is. Either way, we've got to realize that God puts us in the situation that we're in to build his kingdom. All of us, that's what we're doing. 
we're building his kingdom and we're spreading the gospel. And we have to find that confidence so that we can operate in that well. We have to find that he's called us. So I'm kind of being redundant here, but what I'm trying to get you to understand is it's not about you. We so often think it's about us, but it's about who he is on the inside of us. And, and we struggle with that, you know? I don't think that we're the only ones. I'm not the only one that struggles, but I go from not being confident in myself at all, like feeling like I can't do it, to being way overconfident and thinking I'm awesome. Like, I've got to find that middle ground. Do you struggle with that? I'm telling you, you do. <laughs> if you're saying yes, you struggle, or no, you don't, you do because we're in this constant battle of humbling ourselves and not being too prideful. We've got to find that middle balance. You know, when God called Moses, Moses said to God, I, 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 I can't, I can't go and speak to Pharaoh because I have, I have speaking problems. Like I just, I can't do it. Are you sure it's me that you want? Are you sure? Well, Moses wasn't confident in who God was on the inside of him. If you remember, God said to him, didn't I create your mouth? Didn't I put that tongue in your mouth? Don't you know that if I'm sending you, I'm going to give you the words to say and the ability to say it? I feel that way sometimes. I can't do this, Lord. <laughs> like, are you sure it's me? Are you sure I'm the one that you want to carry out this job? Are you sure I'm the one that you want to speak to this person when they're in their lowest place? Are you sure I'm the one that you want to preach this message on revelation? Revelation, like that's a hard one, Lord. Or this message about James out of the book of James. He's so harsh, Lord. Are you sure I'm not harsh? You want me to speak this word? Are you sure? Are you sure I'm the one? But we see that as Moses continued to step out, believing that God was who he said that he was, as we believe that God is who he says that he is, as we believe that scripture that I read to you a minute ago, that it's Christ in me, as we begin to step out, we start trusting who he is and we can build these memorials in our lives. You know, when Joshua crossed over the Jordan, God told told him to go and, and build a stack of rocks so that they would always remember the miracle that God did. And they could always look back on how good and faithful he was. We do the same thing. Like God takes us from glory to glory, from strength to strength. Wait a minute, maybe I can do this. So we see that Moses goes from at the beginning from being a little nervous about what God called him to do to stepping right out and front of Pharaoh and saying exactly what God told him to say. See, Aaron says it at first, but if you keep reading, Moses begins to say the things that God is instructing him to say. It's because he found that confidence. He found that it wasn't him, it was God's ability on the inside of him. So sometimes I'm like Moses, are you? Thinking maybe I can't do it, but I will. I'll, I'll do my best, Lord, and he always shows up. And then sometimes I find myself like Samson, you know, Samson had no doubt who he was. <laughs> Samson was overconfident in his call so many times. We see him taking things into his own hands. Do you ever take things into your own hands? I'm gonna preach this message and I have studied the book of Romans over and over and over again. And I know the book of Romans like the back of my hand. So I'm gonna preach this thing and it's gonna be easy. I think if you ever are in a place that you think what you're about to go and do for God is going to be easy, you need to check yourself. I saw a movie once that said, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> and nothing can be more true. We've always got to check ourselves. Are we, are we taking a donkey's jaw and beating a thousand Philistines and telling everyone how awesome we are because we used our great strength in a jawbone that we found to kill all of these people? Are we going, I did this because God placed the ability on the inside of me. I can preach this message because God placed the ability on the inside of me. I can take someone out of the muck and mire of their lives that are about to take their own lives. I can speak truth into their lives, not because I'm so smart or I'm so nice or I'm so uplifting, but it's because Christ is in me. It's because Christ has given me that ability. So I'm either at where Moses is going, I can't do it, 
or I'm at where Samson is going, look how great that message was. Look how great I did. You know, my coworker said that he was about to take his life, but I talked to him and because I talked to him, he's now just fine. There's a middle balance and we have to find it. You know, when you're driving a car right next to the speedometer, uh, there's a little temperature gauge and it's, you know, hot on the right side and cold on the left side. And usually that temperature gauge is right in the middle. In order for the engine to work properly, it's gotta be right in the middle. If it's too hot, the engine's gonna start smoking up and the car isn't gonna run. And if it's too cold, the engine's not even going to start. But if you can keep it right in the middle, then it runs just like it's supposed to run. If we can find the balance between humility and overconfidence and kind of dipping into pride, then we're gonna run our lives exactly the way that God has made us to run them. Like exactly the way that God has designed us is what I'm really trying to say. We're gonna walk in that sweet spot and it's all about finding the sweet spot. This is a journey, we're in that car all the time until we are in heaven. We are on the road looking at that temperature gauge every day going, Lord, am I confident in myself or am I confident in you? What do you have for me to do today, Lord? What do you have for me to do now? Am I doing it on my own strength? Am I taking control or am I doing it in your strength? Am I giving you control? We find the story in Luke about the Pharisee and the tax collector. We find a man that was so versed in the things of God. He knew the Torah like the back of his hand. He knew every rule. He knew every guideline. He knew every commandment. He knew what should be done and what shouldn't be done. He was Judgy McJudgerson, judging all the people around him. And then you've got the tax collector who comes in and sees everything that he's not. And the Pharisee is looking around at the people and how terrible they are where the tax collector is looking at himself and how much he's not like God called him to be, realizing his need for a savior. And he beats on his chest. He beats on his chest going, I am nothing without you. And that's who we're supposed to be. Instead of that Pharisee that thinks they've got it all together, we're supposed to be the one going less of me and more of you, God less of me. I humble myself before you. I can't do anything without you. I can't speak to someone in the way that you would have me speak to them. I can't preach a message in the way that you would have me preach it. I can't lead my small group in the way that you would have me lead it unless you're in charge, unless you're driving the car. Lord, help me. I humble myself before you. Less of me, more of you. Where are we? Every time that we step out in the things he's called us to do, leading that small group, leading that department, at your staff meeting, at your office, whatever it is you're doing, in the work world, in your neighborhood, with your neighbors, at home, with your own family, where are you on that temperature gauge? Are you starting to lean toward pride because you're so confident in your own ability? Are you a little bit cold, not realizing who Christ is on the inside of you? Because I'm here to tell you right now, he believes in you. He said to Moses, I am for you. I am with you. You can do this. He's saying that to you. He said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. I will give you favor everywhere you go. That's what he says to us. When you wake up in the morning, it says his mercies are new every morning. I am with you. I am behind you. I am for you. Be confident in who I am on the inside of you. I'm with you. You know, he goes before us. He walks beside us and he follows behind us. And James, it says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Let's be those people. Let's continually humble ourselves and believe that we are who he called us to be. Let's be confident in our call. Instead of prideful, Proverbs 16, 18 says, pride comes before a fall. I don't want God to have to humble me. I don't want, can I just do it myself? (laughs) Don't you just want to do it yourself instead of having God put you in your place? Because he will if he needs to. 
Proverbs eleven twelve explains that when we have pride, it leads to disgrace. I don't want to be disgraceful. I don't want to be a terrible smell in his nostrils. But it says that humility gives us wisdom. It leads to wisdom. I want to be a beautiful fragrance before him. I want to walk in wisdom in everything I do. And the ticket right here in his word tells us exactly what to do. It's realizing that it's Christ who lives in me. I've died and I've been risen with Christ. Christ lives in me. He gives me the ability to do everything he's called me to do so I can be confident in my call. Confident in my call. Not prideful. Not thinking that I've got it together. I can walk in his wisdom because I humble myself before him every day. So remember how I started? I said, God's for you. He chose you to carry out the plan that he has to bring his kingdom here on earth, to establish it, to spread his gospel. He chose you. He called you. He wanted you. He believes in you. So will you start believing that he believes in you? Could you start believing that Christ is in you and that you can do anything that he set before you? Have confidence in your call because he sure has no problem having confidence in you. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you so much for everybody that's watching this podcast today. And Lord, I thank you that you live on the inside of us, that that same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of us and we can walk in your power and we can walk in your authority and Lord, we can walk in confidence that you have called us. Lord, I pray that you would continue to give us this revelation that every morning when we wake up, you would help us to look at that temperature gauge and make sure we're right in the middle, calling on you, believing in you, not in a place of pride. When we're in a place of pride, Lord, will you nudge us and remind us that it's not about us, but it's all about you. Help us to carry out the plan and purpose you have for our lives. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And you are honored. We are honored to walk in your call. In Jesus' name, amen.